Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson we'll carry on with the topic of straight lines and we'll move now on from dual intercept method now to determining equation from the sketch okay so up until this point we've been determining the equation from different things like where they gave us a gradient and some points where they gave us in the case of dual intercept method they gave you two intercepts right and then we had to plot but now we are almost working backwards using the sketch that's provided to us to determine the equation of the line okay of the straight line graph so looking here at this first example, we can see we have this nice line over here, which we already know because the line's heading in this direction, we are working with a positive gradient, okay? So we can say there that the gradient is a positive. That's just some notes for us to have so that we can confirm that our equation is right once we're done working it out, okay? So what do we do from this point where we are given two points, okay? So at this point we are given five and two sorry wait i think i've reversed these numbers around by mistake this is supposed to be two and five that's my bad so it is two and five okay so what we're going to do is we're working with the point two and five and negative two here as an in intercept right on the x-axis so the first step that we're always going to use when we determine an equation from the sketch, when we're given two points, okay? When we're given two points, we need to work out the gradient first, okay? Remember, our standard equation is y is equal to mx plus c, right? And straight away, what we want to do is work out that gradient. Cool, because we can't determine anything else right now. We can't determine c. c would be the y-intercept, and we don't know what this point is here on the y-axis. So let's move on with our gradient okay so we know gradient is m and we know that it is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is obviously our change in y over change in x okay so let's just try and identify this point so we know we're working with 2 and 5 right and we also know we're working with negative 2 and 0 cool so what I like to do is I like to take the second one, okay? Well, it doesn't matter which one you take. So we'll make this one over here 1 and we'll make this one over here 2, okay? So what's going to happen is we're going to go, we're going to substitute in. So this obviously is going to be x2 and it's going to be y2, sorry. And this is going to be x1 and it's going to be y1. So remember, I've called this brackets 1 and I've called this brackets 2. So which means that in the bracket number 2, x and y is x2 and x and y2, okay? In bracket number 1, we have x1 and y1. So that's how we're going to substitute in these values. So we're doing y2 first. y2 is number 5 over there, right? And then we have minus y1, which is 0, okay? Then we have x2, which is going to be 2 over there, minus negative 2, okay? So when we bring in minusing of a negative number, we're going to put that negative number in brackets, okay? And that's very important because if you do not do this, putting it into brackets, you won't get the change in sign that is going to take place, which can completely change your answer, okay? So all we've done here is we've substituted in, and because we had a negative number after that minus sign, we put it in brackets, okay? So what ends up happening is we left with 5 on the top, and we left with 2. So that's a negative now times a negative. It's going to be plus 2, okay? So what we left with is 5 over 4, which in this case is also the simplest form of this fraction. So, so far what we have is y is equal to 5 over 4x plus c. Okay? So we're working with a bit of an unorthodox um, gradient, but either way we're still going to work with that. So once we've worked out the gradient, the next step is to take either one of these points that they've given you, okay? So we're going to take either one of these points 
and we are going to substitute it into the equation okay so let's say we are going to take let's take um, the points up here okay so we're going to take 2 and 5 sub in 2 and 5 okay so we know that obviously 2 is x and y is 5 so we're going to substitute in these things into those positions in the equation so in place of y over here we can have 5 right is equal to 5 over 4 that's times 2 okay plus c so you can see now once we substituted that in the only unknown that we have is c so therefore we're able to work out c now okay so we're just going to work out everything around it to find the answer of c which is our y intercept okay so we still have 5 on this side now we have 5 over 4 times 2 so once we times so we're going to times this 2 into the numerator so we get 10 over 4 plus c and so what's going to happen is now we're going to bring that fraction over okay because we need to get c by itself so we have 5 minus 10 over 4 is equal to c so i'm just going to switch this around c is going to be on the left hand side now so now it's going to be 5 minus so obviously it's harder to work with this fraction so let's try and turn it into a number okay we're going to try and turn it into a number and once we simplify this let's say we're changing it into a mixed number we'd eventually get to 2 and 2 over 4 which is going to be 2 and a half right so I'll just say this is 5 minus 2.5 okay so 10 over 4 we'd eventually simplify that into 2 comma 5 or 2 and a half cool and once we do that we can work out that c is equal to 2.5 as our final answer there and just like that we found the y intercept okay so once we get the answer there all we have left to do now is write out our final equation that we have worked out now and our final equation is going to read 5 is e y is equal to 5 over 4x plus 2.5 okay so that was the first example there so important things to note we first going to work out our gradient and we can confirm that it's positive okay because of the way the graph looks and we've got a positive gradient over there so we know that our answer should be right if we followed the working out properly then what we did after that was we wrote out the equation with the gradient in it and once we've done that we substituted in any one of the two points provided to us okay once we worked out that we found the y-intercept or c right once we found that we can write out our final equation that we've worked out and that's all there is to this method okay so we're just going to handle another two examples of it so here we have number two okay so obviously straight away we can see a difference in this example m is going to be negative now okay because it's heading in that other direction so first thing we know always we're going to work out our gradient so let's just quickly write these points that's given to us here on the left hand side, negative 4 and 3, and then 2 and negative 3, okay? We'll call this one 1 and call this one 2, so obviously this is x1, y1, x2, y2. Doesn't really matter which one you name which, okay? So m, we know it's going to be y2 minus y1 is equal to? I mean, or over x2 minus x1, my bad. Remember, it's always important to write out the equation, okay? They need to see that you understand the rule, and you do that by writing out the equation that you're using. So now we can work this out. y2 over here is going to be negative 3. y1 is going to be 3, okay? Obviously, the minus is still in there. Now we have x2 which is 2 minus negative 4 remember now that x1 over there was negative 4 when we bring it in there's already a minus sign there from the rule itself 
So remember we put negative 4 in brackets. Cool. Once we've done that, we can work this out. We get negative 6 on top. And we get 2 plus 4. So we get negative 6 over 6. Okay. And that gives us our final answer of negative 1 as our gradient. If we write that out now in our equation, we can get y is equal to negative x plus c. Okay? It's negative 1x plus c if you put in your gradient, but obviously the 1 doesn't have to be there. So we just have negative x plus c, okay? So now that we've done that, obviously our point or our next step is going to be to substitute in one of these points. So we're going to sub in 2 and negative 3. Again, it doesn't matter which point you use as long as you use one of the points provided to you. So now we're going to substitute in y is going to be negative 3 is equal to minus and we have 2 over there that we substitute in the place of x and then we have c. Okay. So once we work out this now we're going to get minus 3 is equal to minus 2 plus c. So obviously the 2 is going to go over to the 3. I'm just going to keep the c on the left hand side because that's where we're going to get to eventually. And once that 2 goes over it becomes positive so we get negative 3 plus 2. So c is equal to negative 1. Okay. So that's going to be your y-intercept. And obviously once we've done that, we can confirm our final equation, which is going to be y is equal to negative x minus 1, which is going to be the equation for this straight line. So once again, gradient first, write out the equation with the gradient we've worked out, substitute in any one of the points given to us, work out c, and then write out our final equation. Each one of the steps are very important, okay? As you can see in this example given to us over here, we are given two intercepts, both the x and the y intercept, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to identify, okay, we can see that the gradient is going to be positive, right? Don't forget, we need to identify that. It's going to help us see if our gradient answer is correct. So we're working out y is it, sorry? We're working out gradient, right? We're working out y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's write out our intercepts here on the, on the right-hand side quickly. We have 2 and 0, which is our x-intercept over there. And we have 0 and a negative 2, which is our y-intercept over there. So from here, we can identify. We'll just make this 1. We'll make this 2. So this is x1 over here y1, x2, y2, okay? Substituting in these values, y2, so this is negative 2, minus 0. You can see because we have negative 2 before the subtraction sign, or the negative sign, we don't have to put it into brackets because it won't be affected by that negative, okay? This is all going to be over 0, minus 2, okay? So once we work that out, we'll have negative 2 over negative 2. Negative divided by negative will give me a positive, so our gradient is positive 1. And we can confirm there is a positive gradient. So after that, we know that our step is to write out our equation with our gradient included. So we have y is equal to, so we can say 1x, but we don't need to put in the 1. So we'll just have it as x plus c. Okay? Otherwise, we would have the 1 there. But it's not necessary, as you know, with x. So, now we've done that, we need to identify which point we want to substitute in. So, we are going to sub in 2 and 0. Okay? Once we do that, we know that y here is going to be equal to 0. x is going to be equal to 2. That's plus c. So, we're going to get c is equal to negative 2. 2. Okay? Remember, this is our y-intercept, as you can see over here. It aligns with this, the point given to us here, which was the y-intercept, okay? So, once we've gotten that, we can write out our final equation, which is going to be y is equal to 
x minus 2. And that is going to be our final answer here. So just to recap the steps for this, we are going to work out our gradient first. Once we've worked out our gradient, we are going to write out our initial equation with our gradient included in it. After that, we're going to choose any one of the steps, I mean, any one of the points provided to us of the two in this case. And then we're going to work out for C, which is also our y-intercept. Once we've done that, we can substitute it into our equation to write out our final equation, as it is in this case, over here. Okay, so that is going to do it for today's recording. Thank you very much for joining us.